Hi, and welcome to this video on how to use the find function the right way. Hey, my name is Eric, and um, this is actually a topic that I have sort of touched upon in a lot of other videos. Uh, whenever I'm writing some code where I'm doing something with records, uh, let's face it, that's a lot of the time that's what we do in, in Business Central. Um, I talk about how to to use the find command and I thought that maybe I should just do a video on that and and and, and talk a bit about find command um, and it's probably easier to show than to just talk about so let's find Visual Studio Code I got one here fresh fresh extension we'll just add a uh, No, let's add a code unit. I'm not even sure we're going to end up compiling anything. Um, so let's talk about the find. So let's just create a procedure here called test. We'll create and uh, grab the, wow, wow, the customer record. So let's look at when we type customer and find we got a whole bunch and sorry find by email is not one of them that's a function on the customer table but find find first find last find set so four different find commands and um let's let's actually start from at the at the beginning so if if you saw my video on navision 3.56 uh, you saw that what we had in there was basically the same language as we have now slightly different syntax on we don't have the dot uh, uh, we would do a db find rec customer comma like that that would be the the syntax in in financials we got the uh, the dot and it removed the db and the reg so it just became find and the find command is very very powerful so the find command and the find command was born out of what was known as the native database for uh, for business central for navigation, uh, Dynamics, Nav, in, in a couple of the very old versions. Um, the native database was a proprietary database that was part of product. Uh, remember that SQL Server wasn't really a thing when uh, um, when Navision first came out. So the guys built their own database and it was actually quite powerful, but it was also quite, it was easy. It was, it was not simple. That's the wrong word. But it, the the way you access it was was quite simple. And whenever you needed a record, you'll you'll do a find, and you'll do a repeat until the table next equals zero. And what does next equals zero mean? Uh, that means that next actually takes a command of uh, a parameters of steps. And if you don't give it any steps, then it's the same as the next one. And then it returns the number of step it was able to take. Um, so think, think about the, think about the, um, a, a table as a series of, of records. And, and then we'll have a, um, you know, a pointer sitting somewhere and say, okay, now this is where the record is. And then you take one step forward. So now this is record. you can go one step back, back to that, or you go two step forward, go two step forward, two step forward. Now, if you go next two, that's not a record. So you will only get one back. Um, so that's the idea of the original design. Uh, so the original design, every, every, table access was what we today know in SQL as a cursor based access means that we already always knew where we were so so this navigation 
dynamics the central knows the records position in the table and thereby can go back and forth um, so the parameter to find was minus I mean was this was the first record plus was the last record then you can also do equal and equal is actually so let, let's look at this statement for a second here so I do customer number equal 10,000 and then I do a oh, let's put it in quotes you know there we go uh, and the equal is actually the exact same thing as if we wrote customer get 10,000. So it just takes the, the find equal just takes the value from the primary key already in the record and use those to perform a get. Then you can combine and say, okay, I want equal or the next or equal or the previous, uh, uh, or I actually just want the previous or I want the next record. Um, so, so find is quite powerful and and that was all we had back in the dark ages um the there were no changes in performance because the database was cursor based by design then came uh the the support of, of sql server uh, and it, the the support for sql server came in in financials 2. Point I think it was 2.5, but actually really first available in 2.6. 2.6 5G, I think, was the one that actually worked. Um, but that the problem with, with this is that when you access SQL with a cursor, then SQL is slow. Uh, so what we experienced at that time was that SQL Server was slower than uh, the native database, unless there are certain uh, parallel operations where SQL servers was, was much faster. But in most cases, in real time usage, um, SQL servers was, was slower simply because the, you know, the way we talk to a table through AL uh, was designed for cursors. And um, at that time to solve this, Microsoft came up with three new find statements. And this, this is where the, uh, all the confusion start. So let me show you. So in, we, we had the, the find first and, and just to make the pattern here nice, otherwise I'm gonna hear comments on, uh, on Twitter saying, but Eric, the pattern is terrible. Uh, so of course, find will return, uh, whether it su succeeds or not. So this would be the, and let's move the one just to make it nice. This would be the the pattern back in the old days. Uh, this would still works. This will initiate a, a cursor based operation. So this is in many cases slow. Uh, so what Microsoft came up with was three new uh, methods. And one of them was find first. So so this one means find first. So you think, okay, let's replace it with this. Um, and this is still bad because find first and there's also a find last. Do find first or the last record, but you should not start doing next afterwards. Uh, it's it, it it find first and find last should only be used in the cases where you just need the first or the last record. That's the only cases where you should use those functions. Um, so the third one, actually actually before the third one, um, there is another find that doesn't is not named find, uh, but let me show you anyway. Anyhow, so think about the, so if we do, if customer dot find first, then do something important, right? So translate it into, to English. That means that if 
a customer exists, do something. Um, but we're actually not using the record we're getting here. We're just saying, if it exists, do something important. So that's not necessary on the customer. In that case, there's a better find and the find is called is empty. And in, in, in and to mimic, you have to uh, inverse the logic. So if not is empty, mean that that would be the same as a find first, but this is faster because we're not really concerned about actually finding the customer. We're just concerned about does the record exist? If we have like, you know, customer set, set filter name, something, uh, hang on, wow, crazy filter here. Um, so we, we're actually not interested in getting the record, we just know whether it's there or not. And instead of using find first for that, use is empty. That's way better, way better. Uh, so that's the secret version of find is empty. But the one we haven't touched upon yet is the one called find set. And we can just give it no parameters. Find set is the one that you should always use if the next thing you're doing is a repeat until next equals zero, meaning that you're you're looping through a set of records, hence the name set. So you want to find the set and you want to loop over it. Set takes, find set takes two command, two uh, parameters. The first one is for update. And if you set that to true, you indicate to the system that you're going to update the records that you're working on. And it will incorporate the, the, a, a log table immediately. Um, even before you start reading it. So if you know you're going to change it, you'll do a true. If you do a false, you can still, you can still update it, uh, but you will go into a, uh, it will, it'll fall back into a cursor based operation. Um, so think about what you're going to do. And if you are in the true for update and you know, you're going to update the key values also, then you need to tell that uh, as the second parameter. So false true doesn't make any sense. So so the second parameter, sorry, the, 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 the second parameter is always a, a addition to the first true. Um, so if you know that you're not going to do anything, you can do a false false and I used to, I usually do that in code because then I, I can read on the screen that, hey, this is a non-updating loop. So I know that I can, I can immediately see that this loop is, is not touching, is not writing this table to the, to the database. And if I do this, when we use find set, then Business Central, the, the service tier will load the records in way faster and, and running through the records is way faster than if we did this. This will still work exactly as well. And this will also, wow, this will also work. So so there's, there's, there's no, you you will not and, that, and that's perhaps the uh, the dangerous part here that you will not actually break the system you'll just make it slower uh, so this will work and if customer find first will also work um, but find set is better um, I, I, I guess that's the uh, that, that's the that's the gist of, of this entire video. Um, when you so so one thing so so the question is I, I often get so not find set like this of course but let's say you you have a find the old the old syntax you do it like this 
Oh, wow. Give me a plus, baby. And then I do a next minus one. So I'm going backwards on, a, so I'm starting with the last record and ending with the first one. You cannot do that with the find set. Um, so find set is always from the first to the last. Um, that's one of the uh, limitations on the find set. Um, Of course, another important parameter in, in all this is that before we start doing the find set, we need to make sure that, that Business Central has the best way of getting the records for the set. Um, and and you, you, do, you do set filters. Um, I'm just gonna type something that's not gonna arrow out. And what you can do now is you set current key, meaning that when we have a table, let's actually see if I do an F12 on this one, if we get the, the keys, hang on, keys, there we go. So we can see that on the customer table, there's actually 16 keys and uh, Keys are good for two things. One, of course, to, to, to give a sorting order. So if we need to sort by something, uh, well, if there's a key that is already doing that, then the SQL Server don't have to work harder to do it. But it, they also help with filters. Uh, the back end is very clever and will try when you set filters to figure out uh, if, if it can give the, it, it's called a hint in, in, in SQL language, it, if it can give a hint to the query about, about keys. But if you know that you're going to set a filter on everybody, the customers that start with the name Eric, well, and you have a key for that, set the key. This will be faster. This will use less server resources um, and thereby improving the, the performance of, of your, your find set. I think that's about it. So so let me show show me in the comments below, just after you subscribe to the video or to the channel, that's perhaps a better idea. Um, show me in the comment how you do loops. Are you using find set this way? Are you still using find minus, find plus? Um, are you doing find, find first and then repeat until, um, show me. Um, and hopefully you enjoyed this little video on just the find commands. Until next time, have a wonderful day.